because extended care is a separate um, business and it serves a separate function, extended care is available for after school. So you have an option if you are from in the eight to 10 cohort, you can have your kid in extended care from 10 to six, or you can have your kid in extended care from one to six. Uh, we can't be open longer than that just because of the way staffing works. Now, the way extended care works is also a cohort base. We can have 16 kids in a cohort with one teacher in one extra classroom. Um, but near the end of the day, if there's three kids left in this room and four kids left in this room, we can't combine them because that messes with the cohorts and the contact tracing that we need to do. So uh, the, setting up the cohorts so that they're with families with similar types of schedules is important. So we will be able to get your kids straight from school to um, extended care. Can you students do both options a few? Yes, you can do a few days of online and a few days of cohort. The problem is you cannot switch cohorts. So once you've been assigned to one cohort, that's the only one you can attend. You can only make a change if it's going to be a permanent change just because of the way contact tracing works. Can't flip from one to the other, but you can flip from I'm going to be in 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 person class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then online class Tuesday, Thursday. That's fine, and that's totally up to you. Other kids, other private schools applying for their daycare license so the kids can be in school all day. Is that really an option? So here's how that works. You can. They're only allowing all day daycare with people who are licensed and registered with the early learning division and all of our daycare people are now our teachers have a teaching license and that's a whole different category and we can't have teachers teaching in extended care we can't, because that's school and we are absolutely forbidden to have school longer than two hours a day the daycare people will help our students with their online assignments. Even though the teacher's right upstairs and the teacher's online in an online class and the student is taking it downstairs, they're different programs because they're different businesses and those are different categories according to the government. And it's a little silly, but that's the way it is. Some schools are trying to get around it and um, the early learning division is following up with all of them to make sure that they're doing it within those boundaries. I don't know who's getting away with what. I know that I don't want to get fined and I don't want to get anything stopped once we start it. So we are following all of the rules. Supply list. The, the most recent supply list that I emailed out a couple of weeks ago includes a pencil box and hand sanitizer and paper towels on top of pretty much everything else. I am expecting to use all of that. So yes, please, please get that regular supply list. To our time frames, can kids wear a face shield? So the rules with face shield is that it's not as good as a mask what it does is it allows people to watch your mouth move when you talk. You can wear a face shield when you're sitting and talking. Some of the teachers are opting to use face shields so that the students can see their mouth move because that's a lot of what listening is. It's also visual. This is what it looks like when I make this. Uh, kids do a lot of people do a lot of lip reading that they don't really realize until you're trying to talk to somebody in a mask and you, you realize that you're missing that part. So we're asking kids to wear a mask for the times that they're moving through the, the building. You can use a face shield. Face shields are really a great idea for teachers, but I can't see it doing a lot of good for students because, let me get back to you on that. Okay, so please explain how a teacher is going to teach students in person and online. So a typical day. If you have a child who's going to be in the morning cohort, then your child is in in-person class from eight to 10. 
and the other half of the class is working on their assignments and those assignments could be math homework from last night or spelling sentences or um, working on an essay that they need to get done or um, working on an art project we're going to have an online pe class that is like once every two or three weeks so it's not a big deal there are a lot of things that students do that they don't need the teacher to watch them do so when kids are there's going to be half the class in a two hour with the teacher and a half the class with two hour you have some time to do homework there's probably going to be a third hour of homework time as the day progresses just as kids you know settle in and get really good at what they do and then the teacher gets back with them online from two to three o'clock to do an additional class it's an additional opportunity to get some face time with the teacher um, for middle school they're going to do all of the science and social studies and religion in person and they're going to do their math and language arts during the two to three o'clock hour because students go to different teachers for that so that way you can do ability grouping during that um, there are a couple other teachers who are thinking about doing reading groups during that two to three o'clock class so that kids can be grouped like that a lot of different variations of things. The, the younger classes want to have math in person because math is so hands-on and hard to do on a, on a screen. So there's an eight o'clock to 10 o'clock class. And then uh, the 11 to one o'clock class is for the other half of the class. And so while one half is in class, the other, the other half is working on their assignments. They don't have to attend both sections because it'll be a repeat of it two cohorts the 11 a.m cohort watches children will be allowed to remove their masks once they are in their classroom seated at their own seat if they choose to children can leave them on i know that some families feel one way and some families feel another way about it but as soon as anyone stands up and starts moving around the masks go back on um as there's a question about the plastic boxes there are little plastic pencil boxes that are about that big if you look at it from the top down and they're about that thick and that should be able to hold crayons and pencils and erasers and um like colored pencils or skinny markers if you've got fat markers you might also want to get one of those little zip pouches to hold the markers in or something like that with middle school from sixth to eighth grade, um, the seventh and eighth grade are a blended class. So they're considered one class. And this year they are doing the eighth grade curriculum where last year they did the seventh grade. So um, those go back and forth. So the students haven't missed anything. They're, um, they're still getting everything covered by the time that they graduate. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's actually gonna work out really well. So in middle school, we've got um, Mrs. Day, who is teaching science to sixth grade and science to seventh, eighth grade. We've got Mrs. Day, who's teaching sixth grade social studies. Mr. Labrandi is teaching seventh, eighth grade social studies. And Mr. Labrandi is teaching religion to the sixth grade and the seventh and eighth grade. Mrs. Day is teaching a three week writing class and then and Mr. Labrandi is teaching a three week literature class and then they will rotate. So and then all of the math, the math levels will have to work out because of all of the different kids in the different levels there. Um, the first day is September 8th and we will be starting at eight o'clock. Uh, the health station will be open at 745 so you can drop your children off then. Um, and then the question, how do you teach a four-year-old online? Mrs. Boyd is an amazing lady and she's got a lot of great things set up. So um, we shall see how that goes, but it's not ideal. And that's why we are so grateful to be able to at least have the two hours together because she can cover a lot of her core stuff in that first two hours. 
And yes, pre-K will also be doing the two hours in person and then one hour at two, from two to three online. So each child will have two hours of class, either in person or online, two hours of homework that they're just doing themselves, and one hour of online class from two to three. Yes, we still have to wear uniforms because uniforms help kids stay calm. When kids, three dress days, kids get all excited about all of that. So we are asking students to wear their uniforms to school. And when you're on an online meeting at school to wear your uniform shirt, because we one of the things we learned um, in the last spring was that um, kids would be in their pajamas and they'd be wrapped in a blanket and they'd be under the covers and their pillows there. And you don't get a lot of work done that way. What we're trying to do is create an academic environment where you have to get ready for school. And then you sit at a desk or a table and you have all of your supplies and you are dressed and you are ready to get to work. And it's that get to work feeling that's part of the environment. And if we're online, then that environment's important, even more so. Cohorts are not already assigned. Please let me know what cohort works best for you. Um, and we can have any kind of conversation about that, uh, that you need to. Pre-K will also be split into two cohort groups. There are 11 students and I only get to have 10 and I've already got some requests for each one. So yes, they will be, they will be split. How much actual screen time will this be every day? It depends on the grade level. Um, and the older the student gets, the more word processing ability they have and the more uh, it makes sense to have them send in written work electronically. That's going to depend on the sub subject and on the grade level. And that's a great question for parent orientation night. So there are two more information nights coming up. The week before school, which is next week, on Tuesday night, there is a parent connection night. And that night is just to help you get familiar with how to connect electronically to the classes. And then there's, because we're doing, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up a minute, because we're using Google Meets instead of Zoom. Google Meets allows us to be on for as long as we'd like, and it only allows students who have a, a school account. So we will be able to limit who's in there, but you have to know how to correctly connect so that you can be one of those students. We also don't want to get, I mean, we're about to get disconnected here. So um, what I will tell you is that there are only 10 students allowed in each cohort, and that's to minimize any um, too much student interaction um, because they're trying not to spread cohort and um, they're trying not to spread it around. So they're limiting the cohorts to, to two hours and to 10 students each. 15 minutes seems like a short time to get that many into a building. Because we are a small school and um, the screening after the first day, the screening will go very quickly. Um, it's, it's actually going to work out okay. I am not worried about it really at all. Yes, the teachers are going to be flexible with assignments and homework for families that both parents are working all day. We are, um, we are really aware of the, the parent working issues. So yes, we're going to try and do everything we can to, to make it work for everybody.